Hello, my name is Sterling Edwards, and today I'd like to show you the main secrets of painting abstract scenes with watercolor. I've been painting in various genres and mediums for many years, but there's one direction, one direction that gives me the maximum freedom of self-expression. Watch the video until the very end. There's a lot of good things I'm going to show you. So let's see if we can take this. I'm using a big, this is a number two pencil. It's just a big fat pencil. And I like it. And I, you know, when, when I'm doing a landscape, I, I'm very careful to hold the pencil like this. So I can draw these very fine little lines. When I'm doing an abstract, hold it like this. Get the whole arm. Stand up. Get your whole arm moving. You want big, strong pencil lines. So let's just try this right in here. And see, I'm drawing these lines very dark. And I'm really kind of just copying the design that I saw in that photograph. I'm not trying to copy it exactly, but I'm copying it just enough that it gives me a good starting point for an abstract painting. Here's the center of interest right here. That's right there where the word one third would be right in this area. Now, what I'm gonna show you next is kind of an interesting concept. I'm put this photograph out of sight. I don't need it anymore. If I, if I keep referring to that photograph, I will start trying to copy the colors in the photograph. Uh, that's not necessary to do an abstract painting. An abstract painting, all we're looking for is a design. I can paint this piece any color that I want. So I think what I'm going to do on this, just to make sure it, that I don't get too close to the photograph, I'm going to use some totally different colors than what I saw in the photograph. But what I want to do is I want to save a lot of white paper right where my center of interest is. So it, it, you need to decide early on, where is your center of interest? In this case, it's right here. So I'm gonna start using big brushes. I'm gonna tone down a lot of this, just, just kind of knock it down so it's not so white with color. And then I'll, but I'll save a lot of my white paper right where my center of interest is. Because when this piece is finished, I want the eye to go right there. The white paper will do that. All the pretty colors look nice. The shapes look nice, but that white paper will draw the viewer right to your center of interest. So let's see if we can get some color mixed up on my palette. I'm going to use some, uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to use some colors that are far different than what the photograph had. Uh, here I'm using some permanent yellow. I'm going to put some uh, umber. This is just plain umber. I'm using a one inch flat nylon brush. I'm using this really just to mix the colors. So I got this nice, really wet, wet paint. Now, quite often in art books and on videos, people talk about doing a wet onto wet wash. A wet wash is this, it's paint that is so fluid, if you run your finger through it, it does not leave a mark, it doesn't leave a track. In a few minutes, I'll show you what they call, traditionally they call dry paint. So here I've got umber and permanent yellow. Here I'm taking some more of this, this color and putting a, let's put a little bit of a cobalt blue in it. So it's going to gray it down considerably. So now I've got, this is a mix of umber, permanent yellow, and cobalt blue. And again, it's, it's very, very fluid. There's my finger test. So that's, that's almost a cool gray. This is a little bit warm. Let's see what else we can do. Let's get some violet. So I'm mixing up some nice, pretty violet down here. The, the violet will be a beautiful accent to these yellowish ochre colors I have over here. So see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm really just kind of mixing colors that I think will, will look well and work well together. I'm not getting too scientific about it because it's an abstract. If you, if you overthink these things, um, you, you, I'm gonna put some cobalt blue in that, by the way. If you overthink these things, you'll, you'll start tightening up. This is all about staying fresh and staying loose. So let's do this. Let's take this big, this is a big two inch stiff bristle brush. I'm putting a lot of, lot of water on this paper. I'm really saturating my paper. That's nice and wet. So let's take that same big, that same big stiff brush. Let's come in with some of this, this ochre color and just start putting some color on this paper. Now remember, I'm staying out of this area. I'm, I'm leaving that predominantly white. And see that bristle brush holds a lot of paint. 
And I'm taking this, uh, here's that cobalt blue and umber. But look at the pretty brush strokes you get with a bristle brush. You just can't get those kind of broke strokes with a, uh, with a soft brush because a soft brush traditionally does not hold that much water. These, these brushes hold a lot of water. So I can get these nice, beautiful things happening. Now, this is why I encourage people not to try to paint along because I'm working very fast. I have to because it's, uh, I'm in North Carolina. It's, it's very, very cold outside. So we have the heat turned on inside the house, which means there's a lot of warm air draw, drying my paper. So I'm, I'm working quickly so I can make sure I get all my colors blocked in before it dries. Abstract painting is one of the most challenging genres. To create a masterpiece, you need to develop your own style and feel the nuances of the depicted scene. To simplify your journey into the fascinating world of abstract painting, I'd like to invite you to a free workshop where I'll discuss all the nuances that will be useful for both beginners and those who are already improving their skills. Follow the link below the, in the description to learn more details. I'll see you there. Thank you. I'm putting some of that color up in here. Now here's some of that pretty uh, cobalt blue and violet. It's very gray. And we're already starting to see suggestions of an abstract painting. There's nothing really dynamic yet, but there will be. And see, I'm not trying to stay inside the lines. The lines are there just to kind of give me an idea, but I'm not a slave to that. I'm not trying to stay inside this line and that line. This is all about just, uh, just getting expressive colors on my paper. Now let's get some of that pretty cobalt and umber, put some over here, just a little bit. And see, now I can come in with a little bit heavier body paint. Now if you look at my palette, I wanna show you this. I'm taking some more of my cobalt and some more of my umber. But now if you look at this, you notice I can run my fingers through it and it leaves a track. That's because I'm getting most of the excess water out of my paint and out of my brush. So now I've got a thicker paint which means anything I put down here now is going to stay pretty much where I put it. I, I can start doing some negative shapes, painting around a few things if I choose to. Now we're really starting to see an abstract painting. Now let's take that gray. This is, this is my cobalt blue. I'm putting some violet in it and some more of that umber. And again, this is a very, very heavy body mix. Very little water in my paint and very little water on my brush. Because now I'm gonna come in and see if I can't kind of go around some of these shapes like this. Leave, leave the brush strokes. People love the brush strokes. They wanna see how that artist took that brush and did this and did that. They don't want it too refined. They want it to look very uh, almost, uh, almost chaotic because that's what gives it the abstraction aside from the shapes. So now we're doing a little bit of negative painting. I'm taking some of the colors that I currently had. The paper is still pretty, pretty wet, but now I'm starting to come around with a heavier body paint and just put in little introductions of things that can be abstracted or part of my abstract design. And everything's gonna drive the nice soft edge, which is wonderful, that's what I want. I want these beautiful soft edges. That kind of corresponds with my rule of opposites. So when you start on wet paper, everything you do is gonna have a soft edge, whether you want it to or not, it will, because that's just the nature of wet paper. Now this area down here, I'm gonna take a number six rigger, that's got just clear water on it. I'm gonna pull this splatter. And it'll take a few minutes for it to activate, but you have these little, these beautiful little white accents. Now I can take that same, this is my same little rigger brush. That's a little, like a little liner. And if I want to, I can come in and put just a, just a little bit of water on this in a few places. A little bit of design if I want to. 
and it takes a few minutes for it to activate, but you'll start seeing these little blossoms. They're, they're very intentional blossoms. I put those in there just to get the piece a little bit of linear design in a couple of places. The other thing I do, this is a credit card. This is a, uh, it's a very, very smooth credit card. I'm getting ready to do what's called scrapito. Scrapito is a scraping technique where you've got, you've got paint on the paper and when it starts to lose the shine, that means it's, it's starting to dry. And you take this credit card and you hold it very, very low down at the bottom like this and you scrape, you scrape the paper and it creates a magnificent texture. So I'm looking for areas that let's, let's try some right over here like this. You can't get that texture with a brush. It's impossible, but it makes the most beautiful texture with graffito. You can also take the corner of that credit card if you want to and put little, little things like that. And this is part of what really fascinated me about abstract. I, I, I couldn't figure out how these artists, how'd they get these beautiful textures? Because my brushes didn't do it. But these credit cards and things like splattering techniques do it beautifully. Now things are still fairly wet. They're, they're getting drier. I'm gonna switch brushes. Now this is my one inch flat nylon brush. It's a very soft nylon brush. Now I'm using a really, really heavy body of paint. In fact, I'm putting some Payne's gray in it to make it even darker. Because now I can come in if I choose to and put a really strong dark in this painting in a few places. And by dragging the brush sideways, I get this pretty dry brush. Kind of like that. I'm holding the brush, almost dragging it parallel to the paper, a very quick, quick brush stroke. And you get that, that nice dry brush. Dry brush is beautiful. It's a texture and uh, uh, people love it because it does give the piece a very fresh, spontaneous look. Now in a few minutes, I'll stop and dry this. And when I do, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to entertain some questions. I'm sure there probably are some, but I'm gonna keep putting a few more designs in here while this paper is still wet before I stop to dry it. There's no doubt in anybody's mind, that's my center of interest. The eye just wants to go there. So let's see if we can put just a little bit of, a little bit of color in here. And if you notice, I'm getting some dry brush. That means the paper is starting to dry. So I'm gonna take another brush this is a little one inch flat bristle brush. I'm gonna use that just to soften, it's barely damp. Got these nice soft blended edges. So this is the, what I refer to is my block end. The block end means I've established my shapes, I've established my colors. I kind of know where things are going at this point. And, uh, but I've also, it's all very intuitive. I've, I've not looked at the photograph since I made my first sketch. Everything you see right now is, uh, is really just me looking at this saying, okay, I could use some more color over here. Let's put some color in right there. And I cannot begin to describe to you how liberating it is just to have the freedom to come in and do this. It, it's almost, some people almost think it's a reckless way of painting, but it really isn't. I mean, I, I know what I'm doing, but to have the freedom just to come in there and, and if you want a shape, add a shape. If you want a color, you can add a color. You're not limited by what the photograph said. And like I used to be when I did the more traditional realistic pieces. So what I want to do now, I, I've, this is what I call the block in. I, I have blocked in my painting. Uh, I had no idea before I started how the block in would turn out because it's very fresh. It's very intuitive. Uh, if, if the painting, need, if it needs more color, you can add more color. If it needs more design, you can, you can do some scraffito. There's a lot of things you can do, but when you first do your block in, all we're trying to do is establish our center of interest, get the basic colors that we want in our painting established, and then of course, leave the white paper. That's pretty much all we're trying to do. All the splatters and the scraffito, these are things you can do too, but it's, they're, they're not the main body of the painting. The main body of the painting is the design and the colors and the way things kind of lay out. So now that you've got to this point, what can we do to make it a little bit more enticing? One thing you'll notice on this piece, 
right away is when I dried it, these areas that looked very dark before are now not that dark. Uh, watercolor traditionally dries about 25% lighter. So when you, when you do your block in and you put in these darker values, exaggerate them just a little bit, you're still gonna lose some of that color saturation, but there's enough there I can really discern between the dark here, the darker midtones here and the lighter midtones there. So I've got enough to work with now. So now I've got to make decisions about design and color again. So I'm taking my one inch flat brush. Let's see, if we can't get some other color in this piece. I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of cadmium yellow. It's got just a touch of blue in it. I'm gonna put just a little spot. Let's just put it right over here like this. And I'm doing that just to see how it looks. Uh, I may not like that. I don't like it. I can paint over it later. But I'm trying to add just a little bit more color to this piece. And I can also take some of my brilliant orange. My brilliant orange is a beautiful color. It's very clean and very transparent. And I'm putting some of my umber with it. I don't want a really bright in your face kind of an orange. I'm looking more for just a very subtle, a uh, little bit, something a little bit more subtle and a little bit more soothing to look at. So let's take just a little bit of that and see how it looks over here. So I'm putting that right on top of some of that yellow. That makes a nice bold statement. I'm gonna take the credit card. That's the same credit card I used a while ago. I'm using that to pick up some of that kind of brownish orange. We're gonna put some of that right over here like this. These are just little, little textural things we can do. They're not necessary. None of this is necessary, but it's all things that we just want to do. Uh, and while I'm talking about necessary, let me just say this, uh, and I tell my students this, there's no right or wrong way to do an abstract painting. Uh, it, it's, it's a totally intuitive, creative way of painting. And a lot of people, uh, they, they're not used to painting something with that lots of rules. When you do an abstract piece, uh, you can almost take some of the rules and kind of toss them aside just a little bit because it's not the rules that make the painting work, it's what you do with the materials. For example, here I've, I've taken some uh, ultramarine blue and I mix it with this. This is that kind of brownish orange I just put down. Makes a beautiful, strong, rich dark. Let's get a little bit of dry brush. So now the piece has much more dynamics. You notice that dark makes that white, makes that center of interest really pop. So let's keep doing some more of that. Let's put some of that over here. Very quick, very fresh, very spontaneous brush strokes. Uh, the faster you do the brush strokes, the, the fresher they are. And this is one thing that I personally love about it. I've got a house full of abstract art. They're not all my pieces. A lot of these are pieces we have, we have gotten from other artists. And one of the first things that really attracts me is the spontaneity and the freshness of the work. So if you keep it fresh and spontaneous, uh, you're, you're nine tenths ahead of the crowd because a lot of people do these very contrived, very contrived abstracts. And that's not a bad thing to do, but you lose a lot of the freshness and a lot of the spontaneity if you start getting a little bit too, uh, too contrived with it. Keep it fresh, keep it fresh, keep it simple. Uh, keep lots of textures. I'm, I'm holding that brush back at the back very quickly, just making designs. Not trying to make it look perfect. I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to look abstract. Sterling, so many, so many students are writing that they've never ever tried abstract paintings. And now they're so excited with your approach and technique and your energy and motivation. And um, yeah, thank you. It's amazing. Let me, let me thank you. I, I, I appreciate the feedback because <clears throat> I will tell you this and I've got to, I've got to share this with everybody. When I first, first started doing abstracts, I was, uh, I was met with a lot of resistance because for the last 30 years, people have seen me do these very fine detailed, uh, very meticulous <clears throat> photographic style paintings. And then I started doing this and people were really, they were, they were very turned off by it. They didn't like it. They wanted me to go back to my old style. And I just mm -hmm. refused, I refused to do that. I, I, I said, I, this is, 
this is where I've evolved. Artists have got to allow themselves the privilege of evolving because I'd really gotten the point that I just, uh, my, my, my former pieces, I just, I was no longer excited about them. They just didn't, uh, they didn't do it for me. So I had to find something else. And when I started learning how to do abstracts, I couldn't believe that the difference it made in the way my paintings look. I learned to loosen up. That's something I've been trying for years to do, but I never could when I had the little tiny brushes. But now uh, everything I do has a very flint, fresh, clean look to it. And, uh, and that's because they're not overworked. So I'm just adding more and more darks, more expressive brush strokes. I can come in and soften an edge if I need to. Here I did a little bit of graffito. This area down here, we're gonna do something in a few minutes with that. Now remember, we still have the calligraphy to do. And this, this piece really is, a, is not too far away from being a finished painting. I'm gonna take my big brush again. That's, this is my big two inch bristle brush. Let's see if we can't tone this down just a little bit. I'm taking some of this color on my palette. This is kind of a brownish gray. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here and tone this down. I'll put some water on it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is it's almost too, uh, it does not quite fit into the painting too well. But by doing this, now it does. I can also come in and tone that down a little bit. And here's a little secret for you that, that really works. I always frame my pieces with a white mat. And if you tone the edges down, for most of the painting, if you, if you put a little color along the edges, when you put the white mat on the piece, it just comes alive. So uh, I deliberately sometimes will take these areas that are white. Uh, for example, this, it's almost too white. Let's see if we can't tone that down a little bit. I'm putting just a little bit of light color on it. Now come in and soften. It makes this area more dominant. So this was almost competing with this, but now your eye goes back up here. So I'm gonna put a few more darks on this and then I'm going to do the calligraphy. And then I'm gonna show you a neat little trick at the very end. It's a little, little trick of the, of the trade. So here I'm taking my Payne's Gray. I'm using this one inch nylon flat brush. I got my Payne's Gray. I'm putting a little bit more dark in a few areas. I'm really thrilled that some of you are uh, getting charged up about this because it's uh, this this was a real real eye opener for me when I started branching out and uh, I will tell you this and I'm I'm very serious about this when you start doing this it's very very hard to go back to the old style of painting because this is so alluring and so much fun and it's so liberating it's, it's kind of hard to go back to the little small brushes again. Let's do a little bit of calligraphy and see what happens. Now, this is my number six rigger. It's a very thin little liner brush. I've got this dark mix. I've taken uh, some of my violet and some of my paints. I've got this very, very rich, dark mix with my rigger. I'm holding it way back at the back. I want the whole arm. Don't just Plop your hand down and go like that. Stand up, get the whole arm going. I want big, bold, fresh brush strokes. And I'm gonna just make some just calligraphic design. Uh, there's a lot of angles in this piece. Let's get some nice movement. I can also take that brush if I want and put a few lines like this by pushing it. Now the piece is really getting much more abstract. And that's using the, the, the very small little brush. Now let's get a bigger brush. This is my number 12 round. I'm gonna take that same Payne's gray, got a little bit of violet with it. We're gonna start doing a little bit bigger abstract, a little bit bigger calligraphy. So I'm looking for areas that just look like they need just a little pop of something. I'm not trying to get too methodical. Uh, the last thing I want to do is get too tight with it. I'm just looking for areas where I can just put in just a nice, strong, rich accent design. And if you want to, you can also take that rigger brush <clears throat> and take some of these colors you have, <clears throat> excuse me, and do some design with those as well, like this. It's very subtle. 
that just gives a piece a lot of strength. Now the last thing I want to do on this, I'm going to splatter. I've, I've got that rigger brush. I've got this nice, really fluid, wet, dark. I'm going to hold the brush at the very back and I'm going to tap it and put some splatter right where my center of interest is. Splatter is beautiful. It gives the painting a very fresh, loose, spontaneous look. When people love to see the artist took that brush and just splattered. Now, a lot of people will take the brush and they'll do this on their finger. The, the problem with that is it goes everywhere. If you'll hold the brush back at the back and just tap it, it works beautifully. And you have total control where it goes for the most part. It's, it's going to depend a lot on how floppy your brush is, but this, this brush is pretty, pretty floppy. So this piece right now, at this stage, is a finished piece of abstract expressionism. And, uh, it, you know, people will look at this, they will look at this and they will see things in this painting. There's nothing there, but they will see things. They do all the time. I have people come to my home and they, they look at my big abstracts and they say, I see, a, I see a harbor with a bunch of boats. Well, that's, if they see that, that's fine. That's not what it is, but that's the beauty of abstract. The viewer completes the painting. You're just giving the viewer all this inspiration, <clears throat> colors, shapes, textures. However they interpret that, that's what their mind tells them it is. Now, if you paint a very realistic flower, for example, and you look at that, everybody sees the same thing. Everybody sees that same beautifully rendered realistic flower. A piece like this, you'll have 10 different people look at this and they'll find 10 different things inside this painting. Now, what happens is quite often they will, they will start relating to what they see. And all of a sudden, they just, uh, they just have to have that piece. It just, you know, they, they identify with it and they can, they can pretty much figure out what it is and they know where the artist was going with it. And uh, at that point, you've, you've, got a, you've got a future customer because they, they like what they see. Now, I'm gonna show you something kind of different. This is something you would never do with a landscape. I'm gonna turn this upside down. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're gonna look at it from the other angle. Because before you sign a piece, always turn it around, look at it from every different angle. You might like it better upside down from, from the way you painted it. And I've got pieces right now in galleries that are upside down from the way I painted them. So let's turn it like this, first of all. If you, if you know, it's, it's a whole different painting now. But I wanna turn it like this. See, now it's upside down. And if you look at that, it's not, uh, it's the same, same piece, same colors, same textures same composition, but now the center of interest instead of being up here, is down here. Look how beautiful that white is with that nice, pretty rich dark around it. And everything else is just colors, calligraphy, scraffito, dry brush, and the rule of opposites. Here's the rule of opposites. You got very light, you got very dark. You got warm colors, you got cool colors. You got soft edges, you got hard edges. You got scraffito, which gives you a nice light impression on dark, and you got calligraphy, which gives you a very dark impression on light. So the rule of opposites is fully at work in this painting, and I like it better like this. I, for some reason, I, I, when I look at a piece, I've got to make a decision before I sign it, how do I like that painting? I like it like this. I think this has a very interesting movement. Uh, I can always sit there and pick at this but it's not really necessary to do that. So I'm gonna take my number four. That's my little number four round brush. I've got this nice dark mix that I use for some of this calligraphy. And I'm gonna sign this piece right here. That's a nice dry area. And I'm sign it with a brush. So if you look at this now, it's a, it is a finished abstract expressionist painting. It didn't take a tremendous amount of time to do. Uh, what really makes these paintings work is you get in and you get out. You don't go back and keep picking at them and picking at them. Because if I come back tomorrow and start trying to enhance or embellish this piece, I will ruin it. I've done that so many times. 
And I finally learned that once I sign that piece, it's finished. I'm not going to touch it again. Now I'm going to lay a mat on this very quickly. So give me one second. I want you to see how this looks when it's got a, a white mat. So there is our there is our finished abstract expressionist painting. Now I know I covered a lot. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we assist all individuals in mastering the skills of drawing and immerse themselves in the wonderful world of art. Don't forget to follow the link in the video description and register for my marathon. We'll see you soon. Thank you.